And I jumped out of the way. I said, oh, my God, this plane's going to crash. This thing came right across north to south. Of Incidentally, I was a private pilot, so I have some familiarity with the airspace. It glided over my house, and there was absolutely we saw a, no noise. What I thought to be a kind of a boomerang shape. Oh my God, that's a wingspan. I've never seen anything like that. They were reported by at least one commercial airline pilot. It was, it was humongous, that's all I could say. It passed right in front of us, uh, just about uh, right above eye's length. No, I don't hear anything. What in the hell is that? It's, it's wide. I came out second after Monica, and I remember looking at it. It was coming over the mountain, and it was like almost as wide as one of the humps. And it was very exactly. low. It's coming across the sky, and as it's moving, it's blocking and unblocking the stars. There is actually a shape. It was more like a boomerang than a, like a straight V. And then the lights were spaced pretty evenly. It was actually five lights that were a V, one in front two, and two on each side. And it was perfect, it was a perfect triangle. If you can imagine something the size of Camelback Mountain floating down Scottsdale Road, you have some idea of the intensity of this thing. The object we saw, if we opened up a newspaper, you could not block out the object that we saw. People say, Mike, now you saw a B-2 bomber. My response was, we could land all 40 of our B-2 bombers on the wing of that craft. You know, it's, it's, it's one of the biggest things I've ever seen that, uh, that moved like that. I mean, it was just enormous. It happened last night, and eyewitnesses who saw it say it's like nothing they've ever seen before. I don't know if it was as big as an aircraft carrier. It might have been because I've never seen an aircraft carrier fly. <laughs> it barely missed that mountain. Really? Yeah, came floating over the mountain. So had you not looked up, you wouldn't have known it was No, there. my daughter, it was 8.30 at night. My daughter was coming over here, and she ran in and said, Mom, you have got to see this. So we all... There was such an uproar about what people described seeing that we also did a story about it back in 1997. The first report of a strange flying object came at about 8.20 that night from a former police officer in Paulden, Arizona. Over the next 40 minutes, people gave similar reports of an object along a 200-mile route south to Phoenix and Tucson. It was gunmetal black. It wasn't shiny. It wasn't invisible. It was more of a dull, bluish-black color. And we both just stayed there and looked at it for a couple minutes, and it was completely silent. When you look down the street on a hot day in Phoenix, uh -huh. above the streets, like, it's really wavy, and you see everything kind of distorted, uh -huh. and that's what it looked like up inside the middle of the craft. It was just gliding, and then it stopped, and then it, like, the sides retracted a little, and then it was gone. It just went Acceleration to deceleration, it was no noise the whole time. And not a sound. Explanations have been tossed about that there were flares, that there were planes flying in formation. But Mark and Robin, we check with the FAA today, we check with Sky Harbor, and we check with Luke Air Force Base, and there's been no official explanation of those strange bright lights last night. You know, I just didn't have time for that kind of stuff. He was just dismissing everything that these people had seen and said, just like we're all Looney Tunes. And I know what I saw, and that's not what you're telling me what I saw. I didn't see flares. I didn't see A-10 war Warthog. So how about we work together and try to figure out what this thing is. <laughs> what puzzles me is why people laugh at the subject of UFOs, but when the laughter stops, everyone secretly wants to know, are they real? You see that now? See that big one? See it going? Do you see it? Jeez. <laughs> when I told my father I wanted to make a documentary about UFOs, he said I was crazy. In fact, my whole family did. And 95% of the time, this stuff is crazy. But the remaining 5%, that is what keeps me going. This man in the saucer, can you describe him? What, what year was this taken, do you know? I'm James Fox, and I've been curious about UFOs for a long time. If you look down at the very bottom, there's the little disc. Very curious. Look at that. Evidently, the Air Force is curious too. In pursuit of this obligation. And in 1952, they admitted it. We have received and analyzed between one and two thousand reports.
there have been a certain percentage of this volume of reports that have been made by credible observers of relatively incredible things. All blacked out? I wonder what was under there. With the help of investigative reporter Leslie Kane, I decided to put together some of the best witnesses from around the world for this film. Almost 10 years after the termination of Project Blue Book, and the, the cases and photographs you are about to see represent some of the best evidence that UFOs are real. Good evening. A historic occasion will take place in Washington on Monday. Former high level government employees, military officials, and pilots from all over the world will come together. They'll discuss their own UFO sightings and encounters, and they'll do it at the National Press Club in the nation's capital. This group has gathered together to call on the United States government to take an active role in investigating cases involving unidentified flying objects. James Fox, will you be there Monday too? <clears throat> Absolutely, yes. To establish the fact that uh, the phenomenon is real and it's, and it's happening worldwide. Five, are we now saying that the United States is taking this seriously or is this just an event? I, I think the United States is taking it seriously and they, they need to. Uh, it's it's long overdue. And you're going to moderate it, right? I'm going to moderate it. Uh, I'm Fife Symington. In 1997, during my second term as governor of Arizona, I saw something that defied logic and challenged my reality. Before this event, I met with the governor at his home to find out why he ridiculed the sighting. We were in the middle of um, investigating it and just couldn't get any answers. Paralleling that activity um, was this um, almost hysterical environment that was building the hysteria. The governor told me what was actually going on behind the scenes. And we called uh, Luke Air Force Base and we called the FAA and I called various touch base with people. I called my general at the at the National Guard. Nobody had an explanation. People just sort of said, well, we just don't know what it is. Phoenix Councilwoman Frances Barwood was one of the only elected representatives willing to push for an investigation. I would have thought that they would have wanted to do an investigation, but apparently they would rather ignore it. I don't know why. At Barwood's request, Senator John McCain looked into the matter personally. We asked the Air Force to look into it, and this was the first response that we got. We're going to go back and, and ask them to look at it again. Senator McCain wrote letters to both the National Archives and the Air Force. Both claimed not to have jurisdiction over such matters. I was kind of surprised at, uh, at, at that response. Um, but there are people who said they saw things, and whenever that happens, it, they deserve the, at least an investigation, it seems to me. The Air Force explanation eventually provided to Senator McCain was military flares dropped from A-10 Warthogs between 9.30 and 10 p.m. Oh my God! Oh. I hit bait dirt, finally. According to some analysts, these lights captured on film were flares. Well, that is a totally different configuration than we've ever seen before. Yep. But this does not account for the large boomerang-shaped object seen by the governor and hundreds, possibly thousands of others, across the state beginning several hours earlier. I mean, it clearly had uh, a shape to it, um, and, a, and a big shape, and it, and it was a constant shape. And you, you can't control flares that way. There's just no way they were flares. Why can't they tell us? And what's it gonna hurt? I would like, <laughs> I would like for them to come out and say, that's top secret, and we're not going to tell you what it was. The V formation... I was only able to find one video taken of the earlier sightings. Over a period of somewhere between... I was, however, given this video taken by an Army colonel a few years earlier. It reminds me of what Arizona witnesses described seeing. There's no sound, and it's not planes flying in formation. I don't hear anything, do you? No, I don't hear anything. What in the hell is that? Can you see the stars? Can you see through it? Right there. Suggest I see it now. 
and it's and it's it's that's not planes flying in formation behind it either. It's another it's another triangle. What would you say to the people about it? I'd say I saw an unidentified flying object of massive proportions float over the city of Phoenix and Scottsdale, and I don't have the damnedest clue what it was. I saw it, it was over my house. I saw it for five minutes. It wasn't something that was a flash that I only saw for a second. Could it have been? I know what I saw. And I get very upset, and I was wondering why they won't find out what it was.